who am I? Richard Casimir, media veteran. Why I got in radio is because I'm good with a knife. Contributor in Perth, Australia. Our friend Richard Casimir in the United States. Uh, how are you guys enjoying the 19th century? Is that working out for you? How can you say, I'm not making fun of you as a race, I'm making fun of you as black performers? I think as a country, Americans are as patriotic as the most rabid UK football hooligan. Who am I? Richard S. Casimir. Balls Radio with Phil Dobby. We start in the United States with Richard Kasmer. Well, actually, uh, we probably start here, really, because, of course, your uh, president has been uh, over here in the what the local media have called the beautiful city of Brisbane uh, for the G20 summit. And, of course, we've had that agreement on climate change between the U.S. and China. Do you think that announcement uh, was, was made basically to embarrass the uh, the Australian prime minister, who rather have nothing to do with climate change? In fact, you know, obviously thinks it, it doesn't exist. You have a prime minister? <laughs> I, I wasn't aware. Aware of that <laughs> yeah we do yeah. uh well yeah he, he indeed, keeps on embarrassing it, us on the world stage <laughs> actually just on that before we get on i mean did the did the media was there any commentary at all on tony abbott or was he just ignored in the whole deal in the in the media over there ignored in the whole deal right excellent yeah yeah, yeah no really he was <laughs> uh, it's been a busy week for the greatest president of the united states and of course just after a vote of no confidence from the handful of people that bothered to show up in the midterm elections last week president obama continued to show the world why he has a nobel peace prize and why <laughs> Dame Tony Abbott's best attribute is his ability to hold in his stomach while he's wearing a Speedo having his photograph taken. Uh, Obama and Chinese President Xi Jinping, they signed an unprecedented agreement to limit each of these countries' greenhouse gas emissions by the years 2025 and 2030, respectively. It's monumental, Phil, in the fact that the U.S. and China are two of the world's top polluters, and both of us are historically reliant on fossil fuel for power and commerce. Now, as expected over here, the climate change-denying GOP immediately opposed any new restrictions on coal-fired power plants in the U.S., and they're threatening impeachment and or a government shutdown should Obama implement these new standards. However, the Supreme Court gives President Obama full authority to impose any new standards because it all falls under the Clean Air Act, and he doesn't have to go through Congress. Globally, as you're well aware of what happened during President Obama's visit to Queensland, and telling the audience to take back their country, meaning mm. you can fix the uh, pollution and whatnot, that this agreement now takes away from all the other polluting countries uh, the ability for them to point the finger at China and the U.S. and say, well, why should we do anything when these two countries are not? Yeah. Well, now they are, so let's move on. And this is the first, the way, this is the first time China's done this, isn't it? I mean, the first time they've agreed yes. to put any sort of cap on emissions. So you're right. Now we can't say, look, no one else is doing it. Two of the biggest countries in the world are doing it. And traditionally, China has had no respect whatsoever for the environment. It's they feel it's theirs to do whatever they want. But with people choking to death in downtown Beijing because of the pollution, Xi Jinping is, has to do something about it now. By the way, Phil, do you know what country produces the most solar panels and wind turbine generators? Uh, wouldn't have a clue, but I know on the solar panels, I'd say wind generators would be somewhere, well, I don't know, somewhere in, in Europe, I would have thought, seeming as there's lots nope. of wind. China. China, is that right? Okay, China and they also produces. produce the most solar panels. Well, there are a lot of people <laughs> there, of course. But it is, I mean, isn't it astounding? You know, the sun always shines in Australia. And, um, you know, why aren't we there? Why isn't the, the government seeing solar power as the... So the only issue, um, and we're getting off the, uh, the flow of the United States a little bit here, but the only issue um, that has been holding back solar energy has been the question of batteries is the the cost of battery power and the best exa solution i had to that I, I read about that was uh, actually using your car battery if you've got a uh, an electric car with a battery in it like i have with my prius um you know if you could plug your battery into your house you can use that to power the house because you're not using the car and the house at the same time invariably you're normally at home with the car and when you're out with the car, you don't need the power at home. So using the battery in the car to uh, store energy for the house uh, is a smart way forward. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people now believing that, in fact, we are on the cusp of it becoming the most cost effective way of providing energy uh, is to use battery power with with solar cells 
in the home. Mm. And uh, that is going to scare the living. The moment that becomes economic, despite the help that's being provided to the fossil fuel industries, that's going to be uh, that's going to be scary stuff for the fossil fuel producers. So that's the problem. And that's why you see the right wingers, particularly the GOP over here, who are always in the pockets of big oil and, and fossil fuel yeah, companies, is that what is happening now on a global market is that it's making that product virtually worthless. We're still down below $3 a gallon here in the United States. Coal futures, oil futures, just prior to the midterm elections, the stock worth of these companies plummeted. And right after the midterm elections, when the uh, Republicans are now controlling the House and Senate, it only shot up a little bit more because they're looking at, well, okay, well, the Keystone Pipeline is probably a given that that's going to go from Canada right through the United States and into Texas. None of that oil from Canada destined for the United States, but it will raise the stock value. But they're holding on. They're, they're, they are deathly afraid of what they've counted on for generations mm. is now virtually worthless when we're getting a renewable energy source from something that uh, no one can tax and no one can, can can hold back. You can't control the sun. So that's what's happening over here. Yeah. Now, uh, you mentioned impeachment, the, the fact that, uh, you know, the uh, Republicans are threatening it against Obama for taking unilateral action, supposedly, on this agreement on climate change. Uh, and obviously it gets down to legalese as to whether they're right or not. But uh, he's also taking unilateral action on immigration because, uh, in his words, I think the Congress has failed to mm -hmm. reform a broken immigration system. I imagine this is another example where the reply is, well, if you're going to take unilateral action, we're going to threaten impeachment again, this time on immigration. Absolutely. And, and after six years of procrastinating, as well as deporting more illegal immigrants than any other U.S. president, President Obama this past week threatened to bypass Congress again by enacting his own reform policy using executive order. What's on the table is the granting of legal status to some five million people who are in the United States illegally, as well as preserving the family units of the parents who entered this country illegally, but then had children here in the United States, which automatically makes the children U.S. citizens. As expected, the GOP, House and Senate are rejecting Obama's proposal, threatening impeachment and or a government shutdown, to which Obama reminded the GOP this week, fine, pass your own bill. You haven't done it for six years. Don't make me do it. Do it yourself. They're not going to do it. And this is the reason why, Phil, is because the GOP would love nothing better than to build this huge wall between Mexico and the United States to keep the illegals out. However, again, going back to the support of big business, big business in the United States uses illegal immigrants every single day to do work, whether it's mm. construction, farm work, landscaping, you name it, and they pay these poor people below minimum wage. And if they can c complain because of the harsh conditions, the companies will say, fine, I'm going to call immigration and have you deported. So that's the real so that's business the, so that's the, Right. So that's the real concern here. Is it? It's not that, exactly. uh, that, you know, we still want these people to stay in the country. We don't want them deported. We just don't want them to be legally recognized because then they can actually start asking for minimum wage. Exactly. And there's mm. the, the myth that illegal workers and illegal immigrants do not pay taxes. They, in fact, do. They pay any time they buy gasoline, anytime they buy groceries, mm. anything they buy here, they the are paying tax. taxes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So how, how come the companies are getting away with this, though? I mean, because you would have thought the tax office would be onto it. That, you know, you're paying labor here and we're not seeing that uh, we're not seeing that personal income tax showing up in our records. Wouldn't wouldn't the, the internal revenue service? Well, illegal immigrants do pay income tax. And that's what's crazy about this country is that people who are here illegally, it varies from state to state, but they can get driver's licenses. <laughs> they, they can get Social Security cards. They can be in the system and no one says, are you here legally or not? The, the, the system doesn't care. As long as you're paying taxes, the IRS doesn't care yeah. how you make your money. All the IRS cares is that you're paying your taxes. So they don't care if you're selling heroin. They just can't want you to pay so the long taxes. As you pay the tax on the heroin. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, what about all these kids that we were hearing about? The young, unaccompanied uh, kids that were coming over the uh, Mexican border. I mean, that was uh, reaching uh, epidemic proportions a few months ago. Yeah. Is that still happening? Well, like Ebola, that's fallen off the radar yeah. because that has has petered out. They have gotten into 
the system. They are all being taken care of. It's not making news because the news media here has moved on. Is it still a problem? Yes, because those those countries where they were coming from, Honduras and Ecuador and places like that, where these poor kids are being sold into of the sex slave trade. Yeah. They're still doing their thing, but it's it's off the it's off the media radar. Right. Don't worry about it, Phil. We'll take care of it. <laughs> but it, they are still coming over the border yes. and right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, not so much in the greater numbers as we were seeing or perhaps they are, but they you know, uh President Obama has put more people on the borders to to do this and and has develop the system that we can now process these children a, a, a lot quicker. Yeah, I can't believe that wasn't bigger news around the world, actually. I mean, and, and the fact it's still, you know, it is still going on. And it, and it, it is shocking, isn't it, the way we just ignore these things now. We, we're sort of like it was it was news for a week and then we forget about it. But anyway, uh, now another example, maybe this is another example for impeachment, is it? Net neutrality is making the news again. Someone described it, I read this week, as Obamacare for the Internet. Uh, what, do yeah. they, what do they mean by that? Well, that idiot Ted Cruz from Texas, who was actually a Canadian, but he's here by by proxy. He, uh, what you just you just it's like using the, the term Nazi. You throw that out if whatever you whatever you don't like, you call it Obamacare, which we will get to and talk about its success at, uh, one year after its start. But what's happening is that uh, the very tech savvy President Obama weighed in again this week on net neutrality. He's calling for stricter regulations on the big internet service providers who are still narrowing the pipeline of of broadband with of regular customers who are also providing more information flow to those who are willing to pay more for that's the internet super highway, which is like buying a magazine off the newsstand. You pay a buck for a magazine, you open it up and half the articles are cut out. But if you if you pay two dollars, you get the whole thing. Mm. President Obama's proposal is to have the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, the agency that regulates all radio and television over here, to reclassify the internet service providers and have them fall under the same category as a public utility, like the cable companies or sewerage and, and um, you know water and things like that. And what that does is that it will limit, it will tell the service provider or the, the now the public utility that you cannot limit service or price gouge just because you're the only game in town. And of course, the GOP House and Senate, they're opposed to any regulations and they're threatening impeachment or government <laughs> shutdown should the FCC step in. So the, uh, it's so basically Ob- uh, Obama does anything at all now, uh, there's a threat yeah. of impeachment. If you yes. try and do anything, we're going to impeach you. Yes. And what's funny is that they don't understand the impeachment process. They think that you can impeach somebody just because you don't like them. They, they, don't, they <laughs> absolutely do not understand the constitutional process. Now, what's happening is that the, and why the GOP is, is so adamant against net neutrality is that they feel that this is free market. Basically, what they're saying is that if it's just like health care, if you cannot afford to pay for better Internet service, you do not deserve it. They think that everything is fine, that as prices continue to rise and that your service is diminished unless you are able to afford it, that that's. That is the free market system that has made this country great. And it's not. It's, you know, why should the person across the street not have the same access to this Internet superhighway that we have? For, for generations than somebody over here. You know, it's 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 not like it's a better smartphone. Mm. It, it's out there. The smoke is out of the bottle. The, the information is coming down. And now these bigger companies and now the, the, the people, the Internet providers, just like in media of the hundreds and hundreds, thousands of TV and radio stations over here, only six companies control everything. And the same thing is with the internet providers. It's the same people. So where you so, want, just because I, I think uh, I can see, I can sort of see the issue, the concern that, you know, you're, you're not getting full access to everything at the same speed. Uh, but I guess if you've got multiple providers, I mean, if the, if, if there was visibility, so, you know, you, uh, uh, ISP might say, look, we haven't got any agreements with any content providers. So we're going to give you equal access to all content on the internet, whereas someone else, you know, if they were forced to uh, make their commercial agreements known, then that might be acceptable so long as you've got multiple providers to choose from but because you have far less problems with the internet than we do in australia mm-hmm. where we are have a complete stranglehold on the industry by by one company that um that owns that connection into just about every home where you are 
have you got a, a multitude of technologies that you can choose for how you connect to the internet? So can you use yes, cable, you, cable you, for example? You can, you can go with AT&T, you can go with Verizon, you can go with Comcast, you can go with a, you know, a lot yeah. of different providers. However, what the, what the key problem is, is that of these internet service providers to that once you, you've, you've gone with their service, that they can then say, okay, now we're not going to let you go to this website or this service, let's say Netflix, where you can go online yeah. and, and see streaming movies. Because if your internet service provider, the, the corporation that owns it, is in competition with the, with the internet service provider or the media company, the telecom company that owns Netflix, for example, they will prevent you from going on the internet and seeing it. They will squeeze you if it's a political thing. Yeah, it, it, these companies are, are staunchly conservative. They may say, "Well, you know what? I'm not going to let you go to this website for this nonprofit agency or this website that's that's more left leaning, a uh, media site or a news site." That's the problem. Right. There is an answer, of course. Just uh, you know, uh, attach yourself to a VPN, and uh, and they won't know what you're doing, or use a DNS server that's not part of their network, uh, like Google's DNS, and they'll, they'll probably have immense difficulty actually tracking what you are doing on the internet. But uh, yeah. uh, not you're not something for your average Joe to figure out, I suspect. Uh, now, Obamacare, as you say, it's it's a year on, uh, and it's used by many people as a swear word. I mean, perish the thought that you should have. I mean, th this ideal that you should make healthcare accessible to to everybody. What what an atrocity that is! How how dare he in, uh, in put that on the American people? Well, it's it's against God's will for one thing. This weekend it marked the one year anniversary of the of the highly successful, undoubtedly highly successful rollout of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, as it's called. Now, to date, over nine million Americans that did not have or could not afford comprehensive health care insurance are now covered thanks to this government plan. Now, what it is, is it's a clearinghouse. You go on to the healthcare.gov website and you can pick uh, any number of health care insurance providers and plans that suit your financial need. If you cannot, absolutely cannot afford any of those plans, there are state by state subsidies that are available to folks that will get this coverage to you. And the White House this weekend is expecting another three to four million people to sign up. This is called an open enrollment or renewal period. Of course, Phil, the GOP controlled House and Senate have always been opposed to Obamacare. They are looking to repeal it in the next couple of years. And they're also threatening impeachment and or government shutdown should it continue. I know again. It's just yeah, uh, yeah more more impeachment. Yeah, a long yeah. list of uh, long list of impeachments. Can you put them in alphabetical order for me, uh, and we'll work our way through them? They will have to take their shoes off to do that. Now, the the key reason <laughs> that the 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 right is so staunchly against, and even the libertarians are against the ACA, is because it it actually mandates that all Americans have health care insurance, or they will have to pay a fine. That's an edict that the opponents feel is unconstitutional and a violation of someone's individual rights not to have coverage and they, and someone's right to prefer to use the emergency room for a hangnail. And then it costs the healthcare industry untold billions of dollars in unpaid bills. Because if I go to the in emergency room and I'm having a heart attack and they treat me and my insur insurance will cover it. If my neighbor goes to the emergency room because they're, they're drunk and they're hung over and they don't have any money, the hospital pays for it, and that's the problem. So, you know, that's why it's everyone's just like car insurance. You have to have car insurance in this company, in this country, to purchase and buy, drive a car. Mm. Now, what the the GOP is recommending, and I, I'm not kidding, they would rather have the sick and the infirmed and the uninsured go to their families and or their churches rather than have anything that's government subsidized. So if you need help, you go to your family first and you go to your church. And again, I, I mean, not kidding. If yeah. these options are not available to you, they feel that it's God's will that illness has befallen. Well, it serves you right for not being religious, of course. If you haven't got a church to go to, if you're not a believer in God, then you must die, <laughs> clearly. Um, but um, the, so the Republicans must be looking at, you know, countries like the UK and Australia with uh, state-funded health systems. And they, they must think we're just bleeding communists over here. Absolutely. Anything that you try to do or try to use, uh, in even Canada, as a as a reference point, they'll say, well, that's that's Europe and that's trash. They will have this uh, misconception that 
the Canadians are coming down here for health care, so their health care system isn't working. Well, the Canadians do come down here for health care, but it's paid for by the Canadian health insurance system. Right. And what's also interesting, too, is for the next two years, in addition to the obstruction and gridlock that the Republicans will do for uh, Obama's last lame duck session, is that they, in their uh, efforts to try to repeal Obamacare, is that in 2016, they're going to try have to explain to their constituents why they worked so hard to take their constituents' health care away from them. Mm. And that's, that's already a platform to run on. No, I wouldn't have thought so, yeah. I want your vote, and I want you dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, and if you're not going to vote for us, we definitely want you dead. Uh, well, it's good to see that American politics is, uh, is, is working so well, as usual. Uh, Richard, we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks for coming on. All right, brother, take care. 